In this video, we are talking about remote procedure calls. They are used to send events to all players that only happen at a certain time. My name is Oliver Eberlei and you are watching the Sky Arena Photon Tutorial. Remote procedure calls, or RPC for short, help you call a method on another player's computer. In order to use RPCs, you have to do two things. First, you have to define which function is allowed to be called via an RPC. This is done by simply adding the attribute RPC to a function like so. Secondly, you call the RPC function on the photon view. It doesn't matter which class has the RPC defined, so long as the component is added to the same game object as the photon view you are calling the RPC on. The RPC function expects a couple of parameters. First, you need to specify the function name you want to call on the remote machine. And next, you specify who should receive the RPC. And there are a couple different options here. You can either provide a specific photon player here to send the RPC only to this player. If you are implementing a chat, for example, you could use this if players should be able to whisper to each other. Or you can choose one of several different photon targets. Others, if you want to send the RPC to everybody except yourself. Or if you want to send it to everybody including yourself. Master client, if you only want to send it to the player who is currently the master client in this room. Or via server. The difference to all is that you will receive the RPC after it has traveled to and from the server, just like everybody else. If you select all, the RPC will be triggered instantly for yourself, which can cause timing problems sometimes. We are going to talk in more detail about this in the next video. There is also all buffered, others buffered and all buffered via server. We are going to talk about those in the next video too, so I will skip them here. The last parameter of the RPC method is optional. If the method you are calling remotely is expecting some parameters, you have to provide them here. Be careful though, not all parameters can be serialized and sent over the network. It's best to stick to default variable types like integer, boolean or string. You can also send the unity variable types vector3 and quaternion. In our demo, we are using RPCs in several different places. Shooting lasers, hitting a ship with a laser, picking up the repair kit and basically all interaction with the flags are handled via RPCs. I'm going to talk about the pickups in the next video, so let's focus on shooting and hitting lasers now. There are two different methods which I could have used to synchronize lasers over the network. The first one is the same one we use for the player ships, call Photon Network Instantiate to create a synchronized laser on all clients and use OnPhoton Serialized View to send position updates back and forth. But since we are spawning a lot of lasers and because they are moving very fast, this would have sent a lot of data over the network. If you think about it though, you don't need to send that much data to know exactly where each laser is. Since the lasers don't change their direction at all and always move at the same speed, we only need to know where they were spawned, when they were spawned and which direction they were flying. With this information we can calculate the exact position of the laser on all clients without having to send any more data. This is exactly what an RPC is used for, a one-time event that sends all the data you need. In the class ship shooting, you will find the method update shooting, which eventually sends the command to shoot the laser. It starts off by checking a couple of conditions that should prevent a new laser from being shot. We don't want to shoot if we are not the owner of the ship, our ship is not visible because we're dead, if the player isn't pushing down the shooting button, and if the time between now and the last time a shot was created is smaller than the delay we set in the prefab. If all these conditions are passed, we first increase the projectile ID, which we then assign to the new projectile. We are going to use this ID later to be able to identify which projectile actually hit another player. The last thing before we issue the shoot event is to check if we are in offline mode or not. You will see this in all methods that deal with RPCs. The reason is that you can't actually send an RPC when you're not connected to the server, which makes sense of course. But if you dig into the project, you see that I have a level 1 and a level 1 offline scene. The offline scene tells Photon to set offline mode to true and creates the local ship immediately. I created the scene because I didn't want to connect to the server every time while I was working on the ship controls. I also wanted to demonstrate how to handle RPCs when you're working on a game that should work online and offline. So, if offline mode is true, then we actually just call the onshoot function directly without going through the server. But if we are online, then we use the RPC function of the ship's photon view. The method we are calling is named onshoot, so that's the first parameter for the RPC function. Next we tell photon to send this command to everybody, including ourselves. 
And finally, we are sending the three parameters that on-shoot expects, which are the position where the projector should be created, the rotation it has, and the unique ID we want to assign to it. Photon sends the time when this event happens automatically, so this is all the data we need to exactly recreate the same projectile on every client. The onshoot method is very simple. We just pass all the data we receive to the create projectile method. There's a small quirk with the timestamp though. Since this function can be called in online and offline mode, we need to make sure that we use the correct time. If offline, we just use the current time. But in online mode, we need to set the timestamp to the one provided by the photo message info container. This is the time the function call was issued on the owner's client, so it's usually earlier when everybody else receives it. It's important that we use the time the RPC was issued so that all clients use the same start time for the projectile. Create projectile then instantiates the laser prefab locally and passes on all the data we receive through the RPC so that the projectile can figure out on its own where it should be. This all happens in the projectile's update function. First, calculate how long the projectile has been alive and secondly, based on the time, its orientation and speed, calculate the current position. Done. Simple as that. And no data is being sent to or received from the server anymore. It's important to note that we don't use Unity's time function, but Photon's. PhotonNetwork.time is guaranteed to be synchronized between all clients. And that's how we know that the projectiles are in the same spot on all clients. Now that we've created the projectile and sent it flying off into the distance, we need to check when it collides with its surroundings. Since we made sure that the projectiles will be at the exact same position on all clients and the terrain is static, we can handle terrain collisions on each client without the need to synchronize it. But we know that the ships may not be in the exact same spot on all clients because of our prediction models. This means in some edge cases a projectile will hit a ship on one client but miss it on another. So we have to make sure that we synchronize the hit event for all players. Based on the two assumptions that a. the projectiles are exactly synchronized on all clients because they're time-based and b. each client knows its own exact position at all times, I've made the decision to let each client handle the collisions with other players lasers themselves. This is prone to cheating of course, but for the first lesson we just ignore that problem. Let's make sure the game works first before making it better. Once a collision between a laser and a ship is detected, I check if this ship is handled locally and also if the laser doesn't belong to a ship which is on the same team as our own. If both conditions are met, we can accept the collision, deal damage to ourselves, destroy the laser and, most importantly, send an RPC to everybody telling them that the collision has occurred. This is where the projectile ID comes into play. Since every projectile of a ship has a unique ID, we can simply send that ID to every player. They can now find the projectile with the correct ID and destroy it. This way we make sure that a projectile hit is received by everybody and we don't get any inconsistencies. Normally, we would be done here. But careful viewers will have spotted one problem with this approach. Since the event that a new laser is created takes a little bit of time to reach all clients, but the position of the laser is calculated with the time it was actually created by the shooting ship in mind, it will have been traveling a little bit already by the time it is created. This means if the enemy ship is very close, the laser can miss the collision with it. I have fixed this problem by doing a sphere cast in the laser start function from its current position to its start position. If there is an enemy ship in that area, we simply trigger the hit immediately. When working on networking games, you will often encounter small problems like this and they are easy to miss, so you have to be careful. In the next video, we are going to talk about so-called scene objects, which we use for the flags and health pickups. We are also going to talk about buffered RPCs, so stick around for the final episode in lesson 1.